everyone. This is Ravit Rose, the board coach and mentor. And I have the pleasure of sitting with Dr. Jennifer Louie today, who's a clinical psychologist. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Ravit. Thanks for having so, me. My pleasure. So what we wanted to talk about today is um, have a conversation for divorced parents or separated parents who might be in a state of fluctuation and uh, a state of unknown. There's a lot of uncertainty going around. Um, there's a lot of, you know, bickering that is sort of, uh, you know, being dived in because of this whole situation with, with Corona and being stuck at home and so many unknowns, so much stress, and so much anxiety. So we wanted to just have a, a brief conversation about some coping strategies, the things that you can do at home, conversations you can have, and things you should do, things you shouldn't do in the meantime to help you cope throughout this situation so that you and your kids can have like an easier time until things start to settle down and everybody's back to their normal routine. So uh, we've got a set of a couple of questions that we're, we've got answered here. And what we're going to do is we're actually on live with you guys right now on Facebook. So you could ask any other questions in the comments and we're going to answer them back in uh, the comments as well. Okay. Um, if you're watching the replay, then feel free to keep sending us uh, questions and uh, Dr. Louie and I will be continuing to answer your questions after the recording has gone live. Okay, so the first question is that um, the other parent is highly emotional, stressed, and anxious, and it's affecting our children. What can I do right now? So that's a very good question because we know that emotions are contagious. So if a parent is stressed and feeling anxiety, which is extremely normal in this pandemic, it's a good thing to acknowledge it. So the first thing would be for the parent to be able to say that he's anxious or stressed. So there is that expression, you name it, you tame it, right? You probably have heard it before. But instead of saying, I am stressed out, this is the end of the world, you want to kind of localize the feeling. So be able to find which part of you is feeling stressed. Maybe it's your thoughts, it's your mind, maybe it's your body, maybe it's in your heart, maybe it's your stomach, you're feeling suddenly nauseous. So you want to localize it and identify which part of you is feeling stressed out. And the second thing you want to do is use some self-compassion. So it's very helpful in this moment to realize that it's a moment that is difficult. So use a general statement, like this is a moment of suffering. And then you can generalize it, like suffering is part of life. And the third statement could be more specific to what you need. So I can say, may I get some patience or love right now? And then the fourth statement is to give intention so may I give, I give myself self-compassion in this difficult moment, a little bit like you would do for a good friend of yours. Um, the third thing to deal with stress, we know that right now it's a situation that you can't control. So often when it's unpredictable, it's a moment where we get more stressed because we don't know what's going to happen. So if you can instill a bit of a routine, it's going to give structure to your child and it's going to reassure them. So it's a way of regaining control in a situation that is unpredictable right now. So getting up at the same time as you used to, having breakfast, you know, going out for a little walk, um, doing some work, having a snack, play with your child, like a structure in your day is gonna help you move around the day in a more healthy way. Another very important tip is to continue to use humor. So even in a moment where it's dark and we're feeling a lot of anxiety, it's important to laugh about it um, because eventually we're gonna get out of it and we're gonna remember those moments and it's not all negative, there's some positive moments. You're stuck at home, but at least you're in a house and you have electricity and you have food and you're around people that you love. So try to use humor to uh, um, lighten up the situation. So you want to be able to release tension, and we know that laughter is your best medicine. So it's a good way to release the tension. Some people may want to cry, that's okay too. And for children, 
Um, we suggest also rough and tumble play. So play fighting with them. You know, if you're upset at them, you can throw a pillow, you can use some nerve guns, um, you can tickle them. So it's a great way of releasing tension. Another very important tip would be to exercise. So we know that that is a very high correlation with stress reduction. So if you can exercise, whether it is in your, inside your home, you can do yoga or you go outside for a run, uh, even a walk. So, uh, hopefully it's gonna be nicer, the weather's gonna be nicer soon. You're gonna be able to bike out, scooter, rollerblade. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do. If you can get out and get fresh air, especially get in the sunlight for vitamin D, that's gonna be very good too. Um, and then as a lot of people are talking about, use mindfulness tools. So there is meditation. Uh, you can look up, use, uh, you know, you can use internet to find a lot of scripts, even on YouTube. Progressive muscle relaxation, guided imagery, uh, grounding exercises, journaling. So being in the present moment is gonna help you reduce the anxiety. So the question is why? So often when we are anxious, it's because we're projecting into the future. So we're thinking of what's gonna happen, but we don't know what's gonna happen. So it's anxiety provoking. Or people that are feeling depressed or stuck in the past. What if I could have done that? What if I should have done that? So being in the present moment is not saying that you're not gonna feel any anxiety at all, but it's gonna be less than if you're projecting to the future. So do little things like playing with your child is gonna bring you into a present moment. Baking, you know, listening to music, do something and, you know, really enjoy the senses. So the five senses are what you wanna focus on, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're feeling or touching, the taste, the smell. So that's what you wanna focus on. Um, there is a little exercise after I can give you some tools that you can also print out so that you can look back at it. Number seven is to connect socially. So it's really important to do so. So we're social beings. So it's not in our nature to isolate ourselves. Now we want to be very conscious of social distancing to flatten the curve. So we understand it's not face-to-face -face meeting, but you can still use technology to have video conferencing, FaceTime, WhatsApp, you can chat with your friends, you can make a group for, you know, like all the parents in the, in the grade of your child or in the daycare class, you can make um, Skype phone, you can Zoom, you can do whatever you need to connect. Even if you go outside for a walk and you can talk to a friend, a neighbor on the other side of the street. So there's a way of uh, connecting with people around you and inside your home, you want to be able to use the time to connect with your children and your spouse, or if you're separated or divorced, um, find a way to connect with your child if he's with the other parents. So even though you may not see him or her, you can still daily touch base. Um, it can be a five, 10 or 15 minute conversation, but I would recommend a daily touch in. Uh, number eight, I would say is to keep on healthy nutrition. So balanced meals, Make sure you have a lot of fruits and vegetables to increase the vitamin intake. You want to also take vitamin D um, that is recommended and a lot of liquids. So take a lot of water to hydrate yourself. Even though it's not hot out, you still want to use a lot of liquids and um, enough sleep and rest. So we want our immune system to be as strong as possible. So we know that if you eat well and you rest and you sleep properly and you exercise, that is all going to be a good way to boost your immune system physically and mentally. Number nine is important. Do one thing a day that makes you happy, something that brings a smile to your face, whether it is through exercise, through art, um, music, books, you wanna cook, bake, take a bubble bath, massage, it doesn't matter what it is. Find one thing that makes you happy and do it. And number 10 is practice gratitude. So we know this is a really difficult time, but you wanna find something you're doing that uh, you're grateful for. So maybe you're grateful because you're healthy or because you're with your children or because you get a break from your children or because 
you did something well, you were proud of yourself. Um, so look at your day and find something to be grateful about. And you can, either, you can ask your children to do the same. So instilling gratitude is gonna make you feel um, happier in a way. And if you can do some good deeds, it's gonna keep your mind focused and busy on being proactive and do something for maybe your family, your community. Um, so this is really the main tips for dealing with stress and anxiety. So there's 10 tips. You're gonna have access to a little handout at the end. But what I want you to remember is that you can't pour from an empty cup. So self-care, taking care of yourself first is not selfish, is what is important as a parent. You wanna be able to put your oxygen mask on yourself first to be able to help your child second. Um, and it's okay, if this is not helpful enough, it's okay to not feel okay. And there is help out there. So I want you to uh, be aware that there is people, uh, whether it's online, you can call 811 and talk social support. We can call the CLSC. Um, if you wanna go to private practice, a lot of social workers and psychologists are working with teletherapy and video conferencing. Uh, there's coaches out there. So don't be shy to go and reach out for help because there is a lot of professionals that can be there to help you if you need, if it's getting too hard. So hopefully those are helpful. Yes. Um, first part is localize your stress. Understand if it's from your mind, body, soul, where is it, where is it coming from and pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Second one was self-compassion, self-love. And having more, more of that. Mm -hmm. Third is an understanding that you can't control the situation, so how are you going to make it better? What solutions are you going to look for? Four is humor. And introducing humor into your life on a regular basis, making sure that you're always you know, laughing or joking and just kind of keeping things light. Mm -hmm. uh, fifth is exercise, and um, I can tell you that I'm out exercising. I'm going out for walks like all the time. I run twice, three times a day. I don't even care how long because my whole schedule is like open now because everything is unknown, right? Mm -hmm. uh, six, mindfulness and meditation. I actually did uh, a live video uh, yesterday and another one today on meditation and I actually gave uh, a couple of suggestions on group immersion so you could do group meditation so look what my life needs for for those uh, great suggestions on where you can go to do that especially for people who don't know how to meditate on their own mm -hmm. uh, seven is connect socially just you know keep talking to people don't isolate yourself you know like it's not like everything is shut down uh you know your relationships don't have to shut down your you can still talk to or text them and write them just like you would do every other day. Mm -hmm. You just can't see them, right? Or physically see them. Um, and then eight is balance your food and rest a lot, which is great. You have plenty of time to recoup. And now that like we're end of winter and going into spring, like you know, there's like a whole new rejuvenation of our body. Nine is uh, do something once a day that makes you happy. Whatever it is, find the time. Tell the kids to just you know. They call in front of the TV or the Xbox or reading or whatever they're doing and just give you some time to just be you. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you just find time for yourself. And 10 is just practice gratitude. Be grateful. You're alive. You woke up. You're healthy. You're fine. Your kids are fine. Your kids are, you know, you've got food on your table. Everything is great and everything's going to be great. Mm -hmm. So, one thing I want to mention is that when you're uh, transferring the child over to the other parent, Sometimes, even in like regular custody scheduling that has nothing to do with Corona, um, some parents have a tendency to feel empty, to feel like lost. Like, what am I supposed to do with myself now? And like, what am I going to do? And, and all these um, suggestions, these 10 suggestions the Dr. Louis just gave you, are actually the same things that we talk about when we transfer over the child over to, uh, to the other parent. So just keep practicing the same things that you would normally do if the kids were not around you. Mm -hmm. But now just do that when the kids are with you. So it's just a quality of living. It's changing your lifestyle a little bit to incorporate this stuff on a regular, consistent basis. Okay, so the second question is, um, if we're feeling very stressed and very overwhelmed and we're you know, trying to cope and we're trying to introduce all these 10 techniques into our lives, but we're still like shaky and imbalanced. How do we make sure that we can 
shelter our children from feeling that, from picking up on our own stress? So that's a great so question. It's very hard to hide your emotion. Like I said, it's contagious. So it would be good to talk to your child about how you feel, to acknowledge it, because you want to normalize your feeling. And if you have anxiety and stress, there is a greater chance your child is feeling it as well. So you can start you know, using teamwork to kind of help each other release the stress. So it's not saying that your child's going to take care of you because you're stressed, but if your child knows that you're a little bit more stressed, and again, I'm talking about maybe a school-age child and older, he can be more aware and maybe a little bit less annoying or a little bit less behaving in a way that's going to push your button. So I think honesty is important. It's not their, it's not their, um, um, you know, it's not for them to deal with your stress and make you feel better, but it's okay to share with them that this is a stressful situation. So you want to be able to talk about the situation and to explain that this is what you're going to be doing to deal with your stress. And if they feel the need that you can help them with children, there's other techniques. So besides the 10 that I've mentioned, uh, you can read books with children on stress. You can have them draw it out. Um, and actually children are super creative. So if you sit down and they say, yes, I do feel a little bit stressed or I'm a little bit bored or I'm a little bit you know, sad, I can't see my friends. It's a great way to problem solve. You can sit down and ask them, what do you want to do, right? Your child knows it himself best. So you can sit down and say, hey, I trust you're going to find solutions. I'm there to help you. Let's work on it as a family. Maybe there's other siblings that are doing things that are helpful. So I think there is no, the main point here is to not be shy and not um, be embarrassed about how you feel. That's a good point. Don't be shy and don't be embarrassed by how you feel. Mm -hmm. Because we, our emotions are normal, right? So exactly. We feel the normalcy of life, that we could be stressed, but we will always find a solution. You know, we're, we're stay in my own, but it's going to be okay one day, you know? Like, yeah, we might not be able to go to school, but we get to do other things. So, so keep finding the flip positive point of things. That's a very good point. So I would recommend, you know, when you look at Facebook, for example, feed, it's always like nice pictures of family smiling on the beach. And, you know, if you ask uh, a client or a friend, how many pictures do you have on your phone of your children fighting or crying or being angry? It's very little, right? So I think that we, as a society, are promoting happiness, which is great. But we can't forget that those other feelings are normal. But if we don't talk about them, we don't show them how we want our kids to be able to cope with them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, third question. Um, the other parent is not doing things the way I like it or the way that I do it. How can I have the conversation with my ex or the other parents without him or her ignoring me or turning this into a world war? So this is actually a really good question because when <clears throat> when we're in like a regular situation outside of Corona, it's the same kind of question. How do you have that conversation with someone who doesn't necessarily want to have a conversation with you? Mm -hmm. What do you think? What are your tips? So the first thing I would do is cool off. Because when we're emotional, very hard to have a logical conversation. So self-regulate first. Um, and then once you feel not too angry or resentful or you know you your emotions are cooled off then i would reach out and i would not expect the other person to be ready when i'm ready so that means you know when you go to work you schedule a meeting right we've scheduled a meeting today you didn't just call me out of the blue and say hey we need to talk about this and we're gonna videotape right so we can't expect the other person to be ready when we're ready. So I think it's to be mindful that you might have thought about it and you're ready to talk about it and you've had time to cool down. Now you kind of need to be respectful and allow the other person to do the same. And so you can ask them, when is it a good time for you to talk about it? Because I feel like we need to discuss this. And so by being respectful and mindful, they might feel respected and a little bit more inclined to respond in a positive manner. 
and give you some suggestion. Maybe once the child is asleep, maybe they need a day or two to think about it. Um, so whatever it is, you can wait for them to be ready to have that conversation. So self-regulate, propose a scheduled time to discuss the issue. And then again, in terms of discussion, some people are more verbal. So it's nice to be able to talk to them, um, you know, through video conference or on the phone. Some are less comfortable. So maybe through an email might be a way to start a conversation. So it's to be mindful also of not just how you do it, when you do it, but also in what manner. So you want to be mindful of your ex-partner and respecting his strengths and weaknesses. So if you can do that, it's going to help you um, get all your chances in your court to be able to connect with them. Uh, once you do connect, I would use a lot of I statements. So instead of blaming them for whatever they're doing, if they're not you know, listening to the government regulation and you're stressed about the fact that they're not social distancing or the child is seeing his grandparents, I think that you have the right to say something, but you can say, I feel you know, upset or I feel um, really anxious or I'm, I feel scared, right? So it's okay to express your emotion, but start the statement with I feel and then express what you're feeling so that it's not an attack. So watch the way you express yourself. Take responsibility if you have to take any. Um, so usually if there's a conflict, you know, the, the responsibility might be split or not, but you can take your own responsibility and say, I did something wrong or I made a mistake. I'm sorry about that. Now can we move on and focus on the next thing? And then you wanna be able to find a solution that's viable for both of you. So in the best interest of the child, if you can agree, it's already, you know, in terms of co-parenting, it's going to already alleviate stress on the child. So if you feel the tension and the, the voices and the tone of voices raising and you feel uncomfortable, I would say, take a picture of your child and show it to your ex and say, we're talking about this person here. You know, we both care. We can agree. We may agree to disagree and we may disagree on a lot of things, but we agree on one thing. We love this one child or children, right? So if you show a picture and you say, pretend he's here right now next to me, like let's, you know, let's turn down the volume. Let's be respectful, right? So you want to kind of be on the same team, even though you may disagree on how you raise the child or how you, you know, attack a, a problem. You agree on one thing is that you want to do it in a respectful manner for the emotional well-being of your child. Um... I'm just trying to see if there's anything else. So basically be respectful, try not to attack the person. Uh, you wanna attack the problem, not the person, right? So keep that in mind. Um, and also be mindful of your nonverbal language. So facial expression, nonverbal speaks louder. So even though you may have all the right intention, and you know, verbally expressing yourself nicely. If you're non-verbal, is aggressive in tone. If you know you're like putting your hands like this and you're looking angry and you're pounding, well, of course the other person is gonna get the the, the vibe that you're not happy talking to them, and they may be reacting to it. Um, and maybe the last thing would be be willing to compromise. So parenting is like an art, right? There are different ways of doing it. And it's subjective. Some people will like one way and some people will like another way. So try to compromise and be flexible. Uh, you can't win every battle, so focus on what's the most important. Be flexible on other things, give in, and you know, like be mindful that the other person is trying to do their best as well. Even though it may not look like it's the best for you, they're trying to do what they think is the best. So, you know, be mindful of that and try and compromise. Those are all really good points. Um, and the asking me is to the, the last question, which is what are some of the most
event point or with custody and all that is really not the time right now. Why? Because we don't know what's happening. We don't know if people are coming back to the job. We don't know when the kids are going back to school. The, the schedule right now is all up in the air. I think at this point it requires a, a lot of flexibility. So I wouldn't go and you know, go to a lawyer and start to draft agreements. I mean, if there are things that are important that have to do with like what schools does the child have to go to or medication or health or something related to that, I would say that's a different story. But if there's anything that you could wait on, I would definitely wait on it. And I guess Dr. Louie gave us some suggestions on how you can uh, communicate that with your ex, right? So uh, keep your emotions out of the equation. So make sure when you reply back, it's not a very emotional um, or antagonistic or attacking sort of style uh, email or text message. Um, keep a person say, oh, I would rather wait, oh, I would rather do this, oh, I would feel more comfortable, um, and, you know, and those kinds of, have those kinds of conversations. Anything else that you want to add, Dr. Louis, to that? Well, I think okay. it's, it's uh, what I would have said. I also like this diagram, the wise mind. So you might see it the opposite way. I'm sorry about that. But the idea of taking um, a wise solution requires you know, to access your emotional mind and your reasonable mind. And I think that what you're explaining right now is that because there's so much emotion and unknown, it's hard to make a long-term solution that will make sense uh, for two people that maybe are in a disagreement. So maybe waiting it off is the right thing to do. In some exceptions, it might not be possible. So of course, you know, lawyers are available and can be, um, you know, like phoned in. You don't have to meet them in person. Things can be done over, over um, the phone as well. But uh, if you can be flexible and give it some time and it's not going to put your child in danger, then definitely wait for the emotion to settle, but the situation to be under control so that we know what's happening and then you can tackle um, that as well. I think that now is not the time to be making changes to an agreement unless there's dire, dire changes and you really need to make a decision. But other than that, there are, you know, I think the best is to just put a hold on everything for now. And I think that anybody who's reasonable enough is going to understand that there's no point in having an agreement now, which may change in two months when, they, when the kids go back to school or they might not go back to school or they might have summer school. Like, we don't know anything right now. So mm -hmm. I would just, uh, you know, not even like get into an argument. I would just say, I'm sorry, but right now is not a good time. There's too many unknowns and let's leave it open. Let things settle down. Let's read this stuff. No problem. I have no problem discussing it when time things settle. So maybe the, the last thing I would want to add is the three R's. So often, I will tell my clients is that before you can reason, you need to regulate your child, you need to relate with him to be on the same team, and then you can reason with them. So in terms of any relationship, it's valid. So with your ex, um, if you can keep that in mind and first self-regulate, if they're emotional, there's no point of continuing because you can reason as, as much as you want, even if you're self-regulated. If your ex is now emotional, you're not gonna to come to an agreement. So help them regulate, give them some time, and then you can get into that second phase, which is relate. So you have to relate and connect with a person to agree on a solution. So even though it's someone you disagree with, you're gonna to need to find ways to connect with them and relate to then be able to reason and find a proper solution. So regulate, relate, and then reason.
we're good. I wish you um, best of luck and stay safe and healthy. Exactly, and happy. And Find smile. Your way to be happy. Exactly. Um, all the very best. Thank you kindly, Dr. Louise, for coming on today and for sharing your, your great advice with us. And uh, for the rest of you, wishing you a day that matters. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, bye.